jy ken vir Tracy, sy is een ouse, dan is nie, een regular van Dogtown en sy by ons in die hart leer. En vanmorgen praat ons specifiek oor wat jy graag wil he jou hond moet doen. Nie wat jou hond jou mee irriteer nie. Ek denk dis dalk een nieuwe uitgangspunt. Goeiemorgen, Tracy. Morning, morning. Lovely to have you with us again. Great to be back. Let's talk about this. People tend to discipline their dog, say, nie, moe nie. Maybe that's the wrong way to go about it. Maybe we should think about not reacting, but the positive, proactive way of changing dogs' behavior to something that we want, rather, well, learning them the skills that we want them to learn, yes. as opposed to trying to change a negative reaction. Yeah, um, that's absolutely right. I mean, even in our own minds, we need to know what it is we want the dogs to do. Um, a lot of the times, people will say, they'll call us for help and say, oh, my dog does this, I don't want them to do that. And when we ask them, well, what would you like them to do instead of that behavior? They often can't tell us. So we're like, well, if you don't know what the dog should be doing, how will the dog know? You need mm. to show the dog the behavior you would prefer. Um, and what we try and convince people to do or guide people to do is we call it a Give, teach the dog a behavior that they can't do the one they don't like. It's impossible. So like, for example, if a dog's jumping up, if you come into a room and a dog normally runs and jumps up at you, you if you teach the dog rather to, as they see somebody come in, to go and sit on their bed or sit on a mat somewhere, they can't sit and jump at the same time. So if you teach them a, a behavior that they can't, it's impossible for them to do the behavior you don't want them to do, it becomes really easy and the dogs always do what works. So if they know that if somebody walks in, they run, sit on their little bed, um, they're gonna get a tree or, or a praise for doing that behavior as opposed to running up and jumping and people being really Yelled angry it. about it. Mm. And the thing is yelling is still some kind of interaction. So that works for the dog. So if the dog's <laughs> jumping up and you're going, no, and you push, they're like, oh, game on jump, you push, I'll jump, you push. <laughs> so they see it as a game. They don't see that necessarily as a punishment. Mm. Um, so you're kind of rewarding the behavior you don't want. So you've always got to try and think of that behavior that you would really like to see them to display that will stop them being able to do the one that you don't want. How long does it change for you, it take for you to change a behavior? So let's say, let's just use the jumping one. Let's say the dog used to jump, jump, jump. Okay, now I realize, okay, that's a mistake. I need to change the behavior. Like how long does it take for the behavior to change? So um, consistency is key. Yes. <laughs> but um, it also depends how long the dog has been displaying the behavior that you're not enjoying. So if they've been doing that for years, it's gonna take a lot longer for you to now change that mindset in the dog, for the dog to rather go and sit on the mat. Um, but as long as you're consistent and they start realizing, okay, when I jump, I'm getting nothing. Um, we generally do it at, the, at Dogtown at the shelter. If we walk into their garden and they come running and jumping at us, we just leave. So they quickly learn, okay, if I run and jump on her, she's gonna leave. So I'm not gonna get any of the fun stuff that I really want. But again, everybody has to do it because you'll see um, the caregivers who are doing that consistently with their dogs, the dog will know as they get to the gate, they will run, go sit on their little house sleepers, um, and then the caregiver will go in, give them treats and play with them. So they've learned very much that that is the behavior. Um, when somebody new comes along, they still test. Like they'll say, well, can I jump on this one? So everyone has to be consistent. And if everyone's consistent, it changed really quickly because dogs don't waste energy on things that don't work for them. So they're gonna wait for, for you to do something that's gonna work for them, they'll keep doing it. So it doesn't help if you're in a household that the one person makes them sit on their beds but the other one allows them to jump. They're not gonna know what to do, it's just gonna confuse them. It's very confusing for them. Um, and it becomes frustrating for them. And that a lot of the time it causes dogs to act out because they just, they don't know what we want. I mean, we're speaking different languages, so they don't understand what they want. Some of the dogs get really clever and know, hey, with mom, anything goes. With dad, I mustn't jump up on him. I must rather just go. So they do pick up on people, but that inconsistency of not knowing what to do and for us to follow through with it, makes it a lot more difficult for us to change the behavior.
Mm -hmm. uh, consistency is key. Yeah. Oh, Melanie, I just want to sell it. Ding, ding. Yeah. Today is uh, National uh, Adopt a Dog Day. Nee, so, mense bykie daar, dat denk ek ook. Maria, ons gaan nou verder gesels, my tijd is nou voorbij. So, Tracy, just stay right, sit, we'll be with you right now. Who is that lady that, sit, onthou jy daar, nie ouder. Barbara Woodhouse. Barbara Woodhouse. Barbara Woodhouse, nou ja, blij nie daar waar julle is. Ek gaan sys Barbara Woodhouse, sit. Gepraat van proactief wees. Tracy McQuarrie is hier, ons gesel spesifiek oor honde en wat jy wil hele moet doen, but Tracy, from the point of view of a person who grew up on a farm, dogs should sleep outdoors, shouldn't they? That's why they made dog kennels in the first place, isn't it? Well, I think the dog kennel is more for when you're not there, it's got some form of shade and place to go. I'm not a fan of dogs sleeping outside. Two reasons. Uh, they're very much at risk to be poisoned. Um, so you're thinking the dog's outside for security and to help. And the thing is that the bad guys know they're out and they know that they're the threat. It's very easy for them to poison. It, it's pretty much a rampant issue we have in South Africa that dogs are getting poisoned. And secondly, if you include the dog in your family, being with your family all the time, um, they're much more likely to be better at, at protecting you and guarding. Of course, many breed of dogs have been, have been bred to be guarding dogs. Um, I always think of, um, they have the Antolian shepherd dogs that sleep yes, with the sheep. with the sheep, the flock of sheep, To yeah. keep, um, you know, the predators away. And it's exactly like that. He grows up with the sheep. He becomes part of that family. He's with them all the time. And that's how dogs... Oh, that's how they learn to protect, is they're with you all the time. That you, They are part of the family. If you keep a dog locked away outside and not very little um, interaction with the family, there's not that bond. And they really work on that bond as part of their guarding. You'll find most guarding breeds will connect to specifically one member of the family as well. And it's normally the person that is feeding them, giving them the, the time and interacting with them on a a regular basis, they, mm. they will definitely bond with that person and protect that person more than somebody that's just going to leave their dog out in the garden all day. It's interesting that you say that. So I, I, earlier I said, except for the Yorkie, the other three are all mixed breeds. And, and when I go to bath, I have two of the dogs lie in front of the bathroom door. So when I open it, they are they're facing like outward. And, and is that also a form of protection? Yeah. And I mean, Think about it. That's a much better form of protection of them being there than being outside and at risk of being hurt or, or, or killed outside. You know, if somebody tries to get it, they're not going to get in when the dog is there, yep. right there with you. And that, they are. They're protecting you. And that's exactly... That's, that's almost like instinct that happens. It's yeah. not something that I taught him, please come and sit here in front of the door while they go bath, whatnot. Like, it's, it's just something they naturally do they also like when I have to walk around the garden it's somewhere dark they, they naturally tend to walk with me I've also said before you know when I, I take them in the park and we go jogging um, the one dog especially would always move in between me and if there's someone else in the park and then she'll keep moving all around me as we jogging around um, and again that's not something I taught I suppose it's just natural instinct because there's a bond already exactly Wow. Tracy, you also recently came back from overseas trip um, back to sea. Tell us about that. It was actually amazing. It's why we're a bit later in the month. <laughs> um, they invited a few rescues from around the world to go over and be a part of their pilot program. So what they are doing, they are developing a program um, to give more information and guidance to animal shelters across the world to try and better animal care within shelters. So it was an amazing um, opportunity that they, they covered all the costs. And for a week, we were kind of immersed in this workshop training. Um, a lot of really interesting stuff. A lot of stuff sometimes doesn't um, necessarily translate to South Africa, but the majority of the stuff does. We all have the same issues. doesn't matter where you are in the world. We were from all over the world at this um, workshop, and we all have the same issues, dealing with the same problems. Um, and it was just really nice to be invited from South Africa to be a part of this pilot program and help them develop this program to go out and help more rescues. 
Um, and what's really great, I've been working very closely with them now to try and build programs, to do training programs within South Africa for the other shelters. Because a lot of their stuff is online, unless you go like I did now for the, for the week training. Um, and, you know, we have our own issues with everybody being able to get online, do online workshops. It's generally normally in a time where we're all really in the, in the thick of things in the shelter working. So it's really hard. So we've been working along with Battersea and um, IMDT and developing a caregiver training program so that we can actually physically go to the shelters for two days, get in, see what their issues are, work with them, help them work through. Because at the end of the day, you know, some of these dogs are staying at shelters for a lot longer, especially large breed dogs now, sadly. Um, so we want to give everybody as many tools as possible to make sure that the dogs have the best care um, and the best form of enrichment while they're in the shelter until they find their loving homes. Really. That's great. Uh, more shelters in South Africa need support. Uh, Absolutely. All shelters need support and that connection with shelters uh, among themselves. Just having a connection with other shelters in your area, that increases the level of success and, the, and, and, and just the, the better care for the animals. It's Absolutely. And what's been amazing is since um, we started this relation with Batsy that have gave us funding to do stuff, um, we are currently working together with um, over 100 local shelters at the moment, which is incredible. So. You know, we're trying to, we did research, we're over 700 shelters across South Africa, sure. so we're, we've done a little small part of it. But we're going to keep building that network um, and trying to pull our, you know, our strengths, you know, so obviously our strength is yeah. behaviour and training. So we, t we will take that to, and use that to help. There's some um, shelters that are really good at fundraising. So we're trying to get the experts all the from all, the, yeah. all of them and trying to work together because we're all trying to get funding from a very small pool of funders. Yes, that's, that's all for a good deal. The cause mm. is always the one thing. Thank you so much, Tracy, for coming back in this morning. Thank you. And, and having a nice chat about the dogs and their behaviour, what we want them to do, not what we don't want them to do. Exactly. No, ja. Positive manier om goed te benaderen. Maar de levensles van ons allemaal over alles, moet het niet.